Hello, Gasheads, and welcome back to another episode of the Rovers Report. Of course, I'm joined by Fred today. We're going to be touching on our permanent signings we've made so far this summer, as well as some potential signings and perhaps some stuff like formation. Um, obviously, Rovers are on the back of a 9-0 victory over Melksham Town in a friendly last week, um, last Friday. Um, scorers there were Sinclair, Thomas, Macca, Marquis, Brownloft, and a trialist. Of course, we're going to touch on a trialist later. It's a potential signing. Um, so, Fred, our first signing of the window was obviously James Wilson, experienced centre-half. He won the League of Argyle last season. He's got th- four promotions to his name. He won Ipswich Town Player the season two years ago. He's played over 250 times in his division. He's ticking all the right boxes, isn't he? What do you think about that signing? Yeah, mate, I think, like you said, uh, for me personally, it's a really positive positive move from Joe Barton and the coaching staff to get him in. Uh, you know, these things always seem positive at the start of the season, but hey, let, let's roll with it. If you're going from the positive angle, which, you know, I do believe, um, you've mentioned there the amount of appearances that he has across his whole career. Uh, that's a real benefit for our team. Uh, interestingly, actually, he didn't play too much until about, you know, three or four seasons ago. If it was the other way around, I'd have a bit of a concern, especially with his age. But for me, the fact that, you know, you can see the last three seasons, he's been playing 30 plus games a year. At that age, that fills me with confidence that, you know, he's not going to be another Mark Hughes. No disrespect there, but, you know, that didn't work out. Um, You know, and one thing for me that I think is really important is the experience that he's going to bring in setting the standards. You know, I think something that I found found interesting actually is our players can get themselves up for those big games. But when it came to the lesser teams where, you know, there might not be the motivation, you're not going away to a Wednesday or a Bolton. uh, I think he'll be a really useful player for just keeping the setting the standards, making sure everyone's motivated, the same way that Cootsie and Whelan did it. Um, so yeah, I'm I'm delighted with it. I think it's also recently come to light, mate, that you know we actually beat Wick and Wanderers for his signature. Um, you know, and there's not many seasons gone by we could have said that. So all in all, mate, I'm delighted. Uh, how do you feel? Yeah, I completely echo your sentiments. I think Joey sort of earmarked him as a sort of player we wanted to sign after we lost to Argyle in April at Home Park. I remember in his post-match interview, he was talking about Wilson being the sort of player that he'd love to have at a club. Uh, I mean, obviously, I've mentioned his statistics as well, but, you know, I, I think if you read the forum after the Melksham game, he certainly had a lot of plaudits there. It was quite clear of his communication skills, especially... Um, but also, you know, he's he's a centre half. You need clean sheets. We didn't keep many last season. Argyle kept uh, kept eighteen. They only conceded forty six goals, I believe, compared to seventy three for mm. Rovers. The defence was the main part uh, of our problems last season. Probably the reason why we finished was it eighteenth in the end, yeah, sixteenth. I can't remember off the top of my head. Um, he certainly brings experience to that back line. Really pleased that we've sort of got the signing over the line pretty early in the window as well. Yeah. Didn't, didn't drag on. So I'm quite happy with that, to be honest. Um, do, do you know what I mean, mate? When you think, if you look at our defence last season, what would you probably say the biggest sort of weaknesses were? You know, experience, age, communication and physicality. If you look at Wilson's strengths, those are probably all right up there. You know, he's not going to be the quickest you know, the likes of Quanta or, or Gibson were, he's probably not going to be the best on the ball. But, you know, for a man that's going to come in, anchor that defence, be physical, win his headers, you know, I'd like to have a few of the sort of Quanta's around him. But as someone that's going to come in, sort of anchor that defence, as I've just said, mate, I think is a perfect signing. And it addresses a lot of the problems, you know, one player, as much as one player can. Yeah, perfect, mate. I think... um yeah, it's t- also touching on a slight theme with Rovers and Argyle, and I guess we'll touch on a potential signing for Argyle, someone who Gasset will be familiar with um, from last season as well. We also bolstered our attacking ranks, of course. Uh, mm. Luke Thomas returned last week on a three-year deal. Uh, he also rejected a contract off from Barnsley in a similar way to Wilson rejecting um, Argyle's new contract offer. It's actually quite nice to see players turning down new contract offers, isn't it? Because typically you'd think lower league signings, players are released, they're seeking new clubs. Mm. I feel like it's a different level of attraction, don't you think? Because players are rejecting, you know, the champions from last season and the playoff finalists to come to Rovers. We know what Luke Thomas has as well. Um, You know, he's got finesse. He can cut inside from that right flank. We saw that on Friday against Melksham. Um, He's clearly got a lot of talent. Uh, And especially, you know, in in the second half of his loan spell at Rovers, he really came into his own. Um, 
So, and also just uh, another statistic, he's played 58 times in championship already. And we're going to touch on championship experience with players. Um, so what do you think of that signing? But also the fact that I can't imagine Barton would want to be playing him as a wing-back. So is this a sort of pivot to a 4-2-3-1? Mm. Well, yeah, if I'll answer the first question, mate, about the, you know, just Luke Thomas as a signing in general. Um, for me, I think it's brilliant, you know. I think a lot of people looked at his statistics when he played for Rose and said, you know, it was a bit underwhelming and he flattered to deceive a bit. Well, I think that is probably true. You know, his output wasn't the best. There wasn't many players, you know, I've seen over the last couple of seasons. Every time they get the ball, I think, I don't know what can happen here. You know, he's a, he's a bit of a live wire, isn't he? I think the way I'd describe him is a bit of an unpolished gem. Um, you know, yeah. I think Barton obviously sees that. As you said, you know, he's had that sort of, not the controversy, but the... I can't I can't find the right word for you know when he came out and publicly sort of told him off. Um so you know, and the fact that he responded to that and he still wants to come and play for Barton, that shows to me that he's gonna be at it from day one. Um, you know, and I think a bit of time for in preseason around your likes of Marquis, you know, if we get another experienced striker in, because for me, if his decision making gets better and it, you know, and his finishing and his assists can go up. You, we have got some player on our hands there, mate. I really do think that. I think, you know, whether it be in that 10 role, whether it be out wide, he, you know, he's dynamic on the ball, he's quick, um, he's agile. Um, and yeah, mate, when you look at that, you know, a potential front four we could be starting with next season, it's really exciting. Um, so yeah, I don't know if you want to say anything more on that or you want me to continue, mate, with the uh, formation side of things, but yeah, I'm really excited by it. Yeah, I mean, I can't remember which position he played for Barnsley last season, whether it was on the wing or as a 10. I certainly remember when we were 3-0 down in, in the pouring rain at Oakwell after 20 mm. minutes. He was playing as number 10. And I certainly remember Finley or Coots poleaxing him at one point. <laughs> um, but but yeah, it's he's uh, he's a player who's versatile in those positions as well. I'm sure he can play with the left. He's experienced in League One as well. He's played there with Barnsley. He played there on loan at Coventry from Derby, from his Derby days. He's got so much talent. He he was on trial at Benfica when he was 15, or I think was so, it? you know. Yeah, he was. Yeah, yeah. That's a great I never knew that. Yeah, man. if we're going a different way, he'd be sipping on a Sagres um, <laughs> on a nice Portuguese beach. But um, certainly someone who still has a hell of a lot of potential. He's only 24, played 58 times in a championship already. Um, really exciting signing, uh, to be honest, especially that sort of... Um, I guess matching Sinclair on the other wing, who looks as yeah. fit as a fiddle, coming back pre-season, spent about five weeks in Dubai, it seems, <laughs> um, doing doing warm weather training. So fair play to him. I think Barton referenced that actually. Um, obviously Sinclair's a bit of a Benjamin Button in yeah. respect to um his fitness regime and the way he looks after his body. At, I think he's 34 now. Credit and respect to him. Obviously, someone who's had a career he's had doesn't really need to be doing that, but. I think yeah. it shows a different mentality, sort of mentality that we need. Yeah. Um, so moving on, obviously we've spoken about Giovanni Brown signing. I think we made our thoughts and feelings quite clear on that. So we yeah. won't touch on it um today, but obviously there's a video up there for those who want to view it um on our thoughts and feelings regarding that transfer. Uh someone who we seem to be on the brink of confirming as a signing is George Friend, um, West Country Lads. Uh, started his career at Exeter, worked his way through the leagues. An experienced head, 250 appearances for Borough, including a season in the Prem. Uh, I think he'd be an adequate backup at left back or centre half if we play in a three. Um, so, what are your thoughts? I mean, he's played, my only concern would be his age, but he's played the last three seasons at Birmingham in the Championship. He's played 46 games, I believe. Mm -hmm. So, it's for me. It's a it's a very astute signing. Like I think he's going to bring a lot of wisdom to that back line as well. Mm -hmm. What what do you think of that? Yeah, mate, I, I totally agree. To be honest, I think you know it's sort of cut from the same mould as the Wilson signing. Um, I wouldn't be surprised, you know, to see Wilson probably start a few more games. Um, you know, but again, you look at the experience on it, and with these older players, like I said, my concern comes when they play ten to fifteen games a season. That you know the previous two seasons we signed them, which we've done before. They, then they get an injury and, you know, that's sort of the end of them. I'm trying to think exactly off the top of my head, but, you know, I can't find anyone just like that. But for me, you know, he hasn't played in League One since 2010. That whole time that he's been playing since then has been in the Championship regularly. You know, Middlesbrough are a good team. 
Middlesbrough have been pushing yeah. playoffs quite a few number of the season. He was played in the Premier League, so I think it's a fantastic signing. Um, in terms of positionally, I would expect to see him deployed more as a centre back. Um, you know, like you said, if he needs to cover at left back, he's not going to be the most attacking. Um, but you know, again, I, I really do think Joey Barton's building a really well-rounded squad in terms of positions, in terms of age, in terms of experience. You know, if he has to come and slot in away at Bolton on a Tuesday night at left back, you're not going to be complaining, are you? For instance, you know, the first game of the season when we have you know Forest Green, Luca Hall's playing centre back. Joey Barton's clearly identifying issues we've had throughout last season. And he's going, how am I going to address them? And he's addressing them early doors as well. You know, I think everyone would agree probably our defence was our biggest weakness last year. Um, and he's got two experienced defenders in who first and foremost defend and are also going to add that wealth of experience. Because, you know, as we've touched on, mate, we've lost Coots, we lost Whelan last season. So, you know, it's important as that sort of conveyor belt keeps churning, you want to get players in whilst players start going out. So, yeah, you know, he's definitely going to be good enough to play at this level. It might just be a case around his fitness. But, you know, if we get 20, 30 games out of him with what he's going to bring to the dressing room, it's another signing mate, that I'm really happy with. And, you know, I think obviously Giovanni Brown splits opinion, but it's a, it's a fantastic start start to this transfer window, I have to say. Indeed, mate. It's a solid signing. I guess a good opportunity for admin to use it in between as reference in the <laughs> signing video. Um, for those of us who find that sort of thing entertaining. Um, but anyway, yeah, a, a really good signing. Um, someone who, as we've mentioned, has a lot of championship, championship experience. And also, I guess that's sort of a common factor, right? I, we, were, we were speaking about this before the call. When we were relegated back down to League Two in 2021, Barton rebuilt the squad with effectively the Coots and the Finleys of, of the squad. They had experience of promotion from League Two and experience of playing League One, actually. Uh, we we seem to be applying that to the division above now. We've mentioned the championship experience of Friend and Thomas. We've mentioned the promotion experience of Wilson. Friend's also, Friend also had a double promotion with Exeter, I believe. So we're bringing, bringing in some winning mentalities. It's quite pleasing to see. I think we're really... We had, obviously, one of the younger squads in the league last season. A lot of them had experience promotion from the season before. But I think what we're doing now is incredibly clever. We're, we're building this squad with so much um, promotion experience and also experience of playing in the league above. And these are the sorts of players who might not necessarily, like Wilson, for example, might not necessarily play in that division for us. But these are players who can guide us that way and certainly go down with uh, perhaps not legendary status, but cult hero status. Mm. Um so I think that's just an interesting sort of factor that we were talking about. I think Sinclair, obviously, is another experienced head. He seemed to be the only experienced head last season, to be honest. Coots was injured for a long time. Um, Whelan barely played. So what are your thoughts on that before we touch on the trialist? Yeah, I think you're absolutely spot on. And I think you're sort of identifying a pattern of Joey Barton of the sort of wider scale of his, you know, of his footballing philosophy, which, you know... Say what you want to say about Barton, mate. I, I do really like the way, you know, he goes on about Kaizen, which, you know, might yes. be a bit sort of pseudo-philosophical, but it is the right idea, in my opinion. Do you know what I mean? You, you do want to be constantly involved. Just as long as we don't get Tucker Carlson coming into the training <laughs> ground. <laughs> exactly. Well, you never know what's going to happen, do you, mate? Um, but yeah, no, I, I think it's a really smart idea. Um, you know, and it, it sounds obvious, but you want to get winners in. And that is something that credit to Joey Barton. He's always said that, you know, he's not having freeloaders in this team. He wants players that want to be there and want to win. Um, and, you know, I think he touched upon it. And, we, you know, we might speak about it later. But he said that this, this squad has come back the fittest they've ever looked, the hungriest they've ever looked. And a lot of credit has to go to Joey Barton for that. Um, you know, because ultimately he brings the players in. Don't get me wrong, he definitely drives a lot of that. But the players that he brings in hold themselves accountable and hold each other accountable. Um, and that's why you see the sort of spirit within the team. So, you know, I think, sorry, going back to your point, I went off on a bit of a tangent there, but it's definitely a smart transfer recruitment tactic, isn't it? Is to be getting those players that have either proved that they can play in the level above or they know how to get there. You know, you just have to sprinkle a few of them in. Other people step their game up. Um, and then, you know, we could well be looking at a, a very, a very strong squad here, mate. 
Indeed, bolstered perhaps by the signing of the trialist on Friday, the mm-hmm. wonders of the internet whittled it down to a young, uh, I, I'm, I hope I'm pronouncing his name correctly, Teo <laughs> Katarin. <laughs> um, apologies, Teo, if I mispronounced your surname or your first name. Um, he's played in the Isthmian League, um, which is, I can't remember which step that is, but obviously still a very good standard for non-league, uh, mm-hmm. as well as a spell in Poland. Um, yeah, an interesting potential signing, to be honest. Seemed to impress Joey and the watching gas heads on Friday. I think he was playing out on the right. Um, yeah, it would be interesting to see whether we sort of sign him permanently or, you know, how many more games he does play as a trialist. I think he's a sorry lad from see, from looking at his ex-clubs. Uh, I mean, why not someone to perhaps add to the squad if he's good enough? Yeah, yeah, I agree, mate. I think the caveat to that would be, look, and I think probably this will be the case. I, we, I don't want to go and waste a lot of money on this player, you know. I think if he proves himself to be fit and hungry uh, and also, most importantly, to have the ability, um, then, you know, give him a, a one-year contract on a fairly low wage. You know, he's coming from non-league, so he's not going to be on huge wages um, because this ultimately will be a gamble. You know, he has never played league football, to my knowledge. Uh, I might be wrong there, but, you know, certainly not in this recent history. Um, but yeah, you know, if he impresses, uh, sometimes you need a bit of something different to add in. You know, he's obviously played out in Poland, as you've said. So he might bring something different to the group that none of our current players have. Um, what I, I'm intrigued though. I don't know how, how do you think we found this player? You know, I, I imagine Joey Barton has his few, his contacts out there within the ether, but in, in what was it, the Polish second division? Yeah, I mean, I don't know if the links come from um, the the sort of more British connections in the South East. Mm. I mean, certainly not from Merseyside, from his previous <laughs> clubs. It's definitely, I think he's played for Walton. I can't remember that, the name of the um, club. Um, is it Chelsea as well? I, I'm not I'm not sure, but a couple of clubs in Surrey um, and, and a club in Poland. I think it's probably the second division. I'm not 100% sure on that. Yeah, mm. it's an odd one in terms of where this, uh, this connections come from. Um Certainly gathered some attention or garnered some attention um, on Friday. I think he he scored as well, didn't he? Yeah, I was yeah, I was yeah. just looking at the highlights. It was quite a it was good sort of a reaction to a um, ball coming off the post. I think so. I mean, yeah, so yeah, someone to if he's good enough, I, I trust Joey's judgment um, mm. with with players on the whole. So yeah, you know, perhaps someone we could be seeing line up in the quarters a few more times before signing permanently, or perhaps someone. He might not sign permanently. Anyway, an interesting topic, I guess, and a good evening for Mr. and Mrs. Trialist, mm-hmm. uh, as yeah, the, the joke goes. But anyway, um, so I, I guess it's probably best if we touch on potential signings in a different video. Um, one thing I wanted to mention is that Argyle have sort of gone tit for tat. They are signing Lewis Gibson, I believe, um, in the zero-sum game against us. Uh, so I guess swapping centre-half, someone who I think is spot in really nicely with Wilson actually putting my ideal signing mm. being a left sided centre half in a four but um, Kesara Sara I think um, there are plenty of other players out there and Gibson do- obviously does have his injury problems um, so to be honest mate I think we can end it there but I just want to echo what you said in terms of what Joey spoke about um, I think after the game on Friday in terms of this is the fittest and most ready squad he's had for pre-season I think it must be his fifth or sixth pre-season now, took over Fleetwood in the summer of 2018. So it's incredibly impressive uh, and credit to the players. And someone, I guess, who will be like a new signing as well is Mr. Rossiter, um, Mm. who um, hadn't played since, uh, I think it was December or so. Let's hope he's fit and ready to go because he'll be like a new signing as a pivot in that midfield. But any other thoughts and feelings, mate? I think, um, you know, it's been a good start to the window this year we tend to leave things quite late especially like in January but um, you know going early I think is is mostly beneficial I think it pays off in the long run Mm. Um, but yeah I think hopefully more to come I think we still need to add a centre half uh, probably another another uh, number eight and another striker and and perhaps another wing as well if we're going to be playing 4-2-3-1 yeah yeah I think you're spot on mate and you know I think Obviously, we like, like I said, we've touched on the Giovanni Brown thing, and you know that has 
been a bit of a stain on this, to be honest. But having said that, you look at the positives. We've made um, three exceptional signings there. Um, you know, that 9-0 win away at Melchon, I'm not reading into that at all. But it's nice just to have yeah, that. Of course. Move, you know? And as Joey Barton says, they've come back the fittest squad that he's ever seen. Um, you know, and I'm looking forward to it now, mate. You, I think, you know, sometimes early on in the, in the transfer window, you get a couple of signings, you go, I'm not sure about them. On paper, all of our signings that we've made so far look to be real quality. All four of them could go into our starting 11, couldn't they? And add a bit of quality there. So for me, I'm really happy with the work we've done so far. Um, and yeah, I think, you know, I'd probably be looking at six or seven more additions. Probably three or four of them will be loan signings towards the back end of it. Um, but yeah, I, I'm really I'm really looking forward to the season, mate, especially with the, the signings we've made. Uh, and yeah, I'm starting to get that, you know, this new season buzz coming back. I had the sort of yeah. time off watching a bit of the Ashes, but yeah, it's time for the footballs to come back. Yeah, I think um yeah, I'm looking forward to it um uh, to it too. Um I mean I think we've also been linked with Aaron Lewis from Newport or who was just rejected a new contract or been released from Newport. I think um someone on the forum mentioned that. So how concrete that is, I'm not too sure. Mm. I believe we also missed out on Gavin White, um, who's gone to Pompey. Uh but yeah, as, as with every as other player said, this this transfer window, mate. Yeah, exactly. So I think, um, you know, looking forward to the new season, I think everybody always has a, unless the club's going bust, I think every fan has a sort of optimistic feel um, to the sort of pre-season. So here's the next few games. I'm not sure who we have next, but I know there's Swansea on the agenda uh, and also a trip to Portugal. So, yeah. Anyway, so I guess we'll be doing a new signing on uh, of a, of a um, sorry, new video on new signings uh, soon. Um, but yeah, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And cheers, Fred. And I guess we'll see each other soon. Nice, mate. Thank you very much. Yes.